Right, we've uh, we've started our little knockout competition to see who was the best All Ireland winning team from the last sixteen years. Um, if people didn't see it earlier, we had a battle between Galway two thousand and seventeen and Kilkenny two thousand and seven. So uh, we'll just get that back up on screen again, myself and Michael Verney there as always. So the first team, uh, the first group that uh, that I said already, that's uh, Kilkenny Gal Galway. We're waiting for the votes on that, and make sure to check out the polls both on Twitter. And on YouTube, the comments afterwards will put up, like uh, after this one, Tipperary 2019, Cork 2005. Click like on whichever comment if you want to vote that way. So the next one we'll do will be 2015, Kilkenny against 2013, Clare 2011, Kilkenny against 2006, Kilkenny, and so on and so forth. And we'll keep it going uh, in that fashion. So now we're going to move on to the 2019 Tipperary against 2005, Cork. And in terms of generational gaps, this is the biggest sort of generational gap that we've seen. I just watched back the highlights of the 2005 All-Ireland Final where Cork beat Galway. I'm very familiar with Tipperary winning the All-Ireland by 14 points last year. Very impressive performance. First of all, before we even sort of match up these two teams, do you think the game has changed a huge amount? Having, you know, you're very familiar with current hurling, but having watched back those highlights yourself. Yeah, it definitely has. It's so much more first time even, like, we're kind of watching it there together even, and... Uh, you're just thinking how many ground pulls there were. Ollie Canning had a ground pull from his own 45 at one stage. It went about 100 yards and ended up in a score up the far end. You wouldn't dream like of doing it now. It's just too kind of, it's almost too high risk. Um, and plus, if it gets blocked down, it's probably going to be a sc score over your head straight away. Um, Cork, like while we thought Cork were playing a possession game, when you look at it in, in, a, like, in comparison to what's going on now, they're poles apart, really. Like, nowadays, teams play possession games, but it's a different type of possession. Cork, that seemed exaggerated back then, like, 15 years ago. But, like, in comparison to, like, the way teams are playing now and short stick pass and things like that, you wouldn't even t see that as Cork playing possession game, really. Let's just jump on to the, the team that Cork had back in 2005. We'll just get the, the final team up here. And, and even just a quick rundown on the scores. Like Ben O'Connor was unbelievable, scored 1-7. Tom Kenny uh, scored 3 from midfield. Joe Dean got 3. Brian Corcoran, of course, full forward, got 2. Jerry O'Connor midfield got 2. So that's 5 from midfield straight away. Timmy McCarthy with 2. Niall McCarthy won. Niall McCarthy had been... Was he man of the match in the All-Ireland final the year before? And John Gardner got a point. So, running through the team, Don Logan goals. Brian Murphy, who, of course, played up until 2013, as did Tom Kenny, and they'd be the most... Uh, the guys who retired most recently. Uh, Pat Mulcahy... Or, Dermot Rock O'Sullivan, Pat Mulcahy, uh, John Gardner, Ronan Curran, Sean Ogohalpine, unbelievable half-back line. Uh, we mentioned the midfield. Then Kieran Fraggy Murphy, Niall McCarthy, Timmy McCarthy, probably not the most fashionable, fashionable half forward line. Then an unbelievable inside line of Ben O'Connor, Brian Corcoran, and Joe Dean. So I mean, it's it's hard to debate against the the like it's a pretty brilliant team. Yeah, and just saying about Timmy McCarthy, definitely wasn't probably the most fashionable half forward. Definitely didn't have the most fashionable helmet anyway. That kind of old astronaut kind of white helmet. But hit between him and Niall McCarthy, they were so effective in fairness to them. And just even thinking back, I'd forgotten about it. Like you have Kieran Fraggy Murphy wing forward, and then you have Kieran Hero Murphy that came that came on. Like you know, it's just it's it's gas. It kind of it's it is it's it's quite a long time ago. But some of those names really stand the test of time. You know, Don Lowe, Brian Murphy, Dermot O'Sullivan, uh, Ron and Kern, Sean O'Gg, Tom Kent. Like you're you're going through a who's who of hurling there, names that would match up so well in any era. That's not even saying Joe Dean, Ben O'Connor and Brian Corcoran. Do you know what I mean? Like their names, it's like going through the Great Kilkenny team, kind of when you look back through that Cork team. Um, a phenomenal outfit. Obviously had to win a lot less games than the Tip 19 team would have had to win as well. Won five games to win an All-Ireland, beating Waterford twice along the way, one in the Munster semi-final and one in the Munster didn't actually meet Kilkenny, which to me goes against them a small bit. Um, I, t I Like, they'd beaten them in 4 To beat them again in 5 would have been huge. They obviously didn't meet because Galway beat them. But when they met again in 6 Kilkenny kind of got, you know, got a bit of revenge on them. So the teams they beat maybe aren't unbelievably strong. They had a lot of tough games. Waterford, obviously, a tough game. Tip they won by five in the Munster final, beat Walford in the All Ireland quarter final by two or three, I think. An epic against Clare, 
Yeah, a bit of a bug in the machine there. Uh, as I as I'm flicking onto that other page there, so apologies for that. Yeah, um, one thing that I do, would say in the favour of Cork is that they had four hurlers of the year in the team. So uh, Jerry O'Connor won it for this particular season, 2005. Uh, Sean Ogahalpin had won it the year before and then of course Brian Corker at full forward had won it in 1992 and 1999 before converting himself to a forward so th there's there's a lot of class around that team and that midfield like Jerry O'Connor and Tom Kenny at the time they were just feared far and wide Unbelievable um, just like Energizer bunnies running up and down the pitch they were, they were unreal I suppose a lot of that, the Cork team it's funny that you talk about mobility and athleticism now. That core team was based on mobility and athleticism. And, you know, I would always say that, like, the, the hardship that Ben O'Connor and even Jerry put themselves through, the pace that their bodies were running at, it was always going to be hard to sustain their careers to have, you know, a 15-year inter-county career or anything like that. But they had unbelievable careers. Uh, that's an interesting midfield battle. Um like, as I said, Jerry was hurled the year in 05. I think they got five points uh, between the two midfielders, him and Tom Kenny, in that All-Ireland final. Be interesting to see them coming up against. Michael Breen would be, um, he would definitely have the athleticism for one of them. Whether he'd have the hurling for the two of them, I'm not sure. I'm and not, the, not and sure. then on the flip side, Noah McGrath probably wouldn't have the speed for either of them, but he'd probably arguably have more hurling than either Jerry O'Connor and and Tom Kenny, not to mention the fact that it was a bit of a joke that he wasn't nominated for Hurler of the Year. Uh, the Noel McGrath one is gas like uh, you see you don't need to ha you don't need to be unbelievably fast over fifty yards or anything like that when when you move like he does. Like one of his best attributes is how quickly he stops. He gets the ball and he's able to decelerate unbelievably fast and create space for himself. Then obviously you have those musical wrists like that can literally do anything from a hundred yards inside. Like he can literally score from anywhere a hundred yards inside or deliver a ball onto a sixpence, like he did for Callan in the the All Ireland quarter final this year against Leash. Like so, it's a it'd be a big contrast. Just say he, you know him on Jerry O'Connor or him on Tom Kenny. You're talking about you know, but Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor are very skillful players. But you're talking about like the silk against almost like the speed do you know what I mean so it'll be, there, it'll be an interesting battle well let's look at the Tipperary team from 2009 before we start pitting them against each other um, that tip, or 2019 so Brian Hogan in goals I think uh, you'd probably give Don Logue the edge just there because he's further in his career and definitely what he did was very revolutionary uh, Cahill Barra cornerback Barry Heffernan Ronan Maher now realistically Barry Heffernan was further out the field uh, Brendan Maher, who did a man-marking job on TJ Reid. You have Porrick Maher, Seamus Kendi, Noam McGrath and Michael Breen, like we said. Then Dan McCormack, uh, John O'Dwyer, who played further up the field for a lot of it. Niall O'Mara, who scored the goal. Jason Ford, Seamus Callanan and John McGrath. So with, with Seamus Callanan there, it, like even if you were just to compare the full forwards, you're talking about a guy who scored a goal in every single one of the eight games and all from play against Brian Corcoran, who's very, very good at knitting the play together, but probably wasn't that same sort of goal threat. So even if you were just to... Like, I would have given Cork the edge at midfield, probably. But I think in terms of, like, danger right beside the, the goal, you'd have to give it to tip there. Yeah, funnily enough, just, just when you were calling out the players, it kind of... Uh, what came back to me was, if the Cork 05 team were to play the tip 19 team, I think it would be very similar to when Cork played that kind of great Waterford team back in the day. I think you'd have, you know, your big goal threats. Your, you'd say you had, they had Big Dan, they had uh, Paul Flynn, Owen Kelly, John Milan. On the tip side of things then, you have Callanan, Jason Ford, John McGrath, Bubbles or the Wire. Whereas Cork were, Cork didn't have any one player that was going to kill you by themselves, but they had several players that were going to, you know, inflict enough wounds that they'd eventually knock you over, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Whereas, whereas Maybe, maybe Tip, you know, maybe Tip didn't, uh, it was more, not more reliant on a couple of lads, but they had a couple of lads that would deliver killer blows, whereas Cork would, yeah, kill you slowly, shall we say. It was kind of, it just reminds me of that Tip, uh, or that Cork-Waterford battle back from the, you know, the whole way through the noughties, really. Mm. I think Ronan Maher, the way he played full back, would have actually suited Mark and Brian Corcoran, but of course, Wiley Old Fox and all that, it's, it's hard to say definitively. A couple of things I want to look at. The amount of all-stars won by both teams and we do have to kind of put an asterisk on this to say that plenty of this Tipperary team have a few more years in them and can potentially win more All-Irelands, uh, or sorry, all-stars. That, that, uh, that team for Cork, 27 all-stars, four hurlers of the year, now two of them to Corcoran, 
that Tipperary team 23 all stars and there's one two three four five six of the team that started against Kilkenny that hadn't won an all star either so that has to be taken into account yeah that that's a star studded Cork team really and when you go down through it like that to say that Cork won one hurler the year at cornerback centre back and then won an all Ireland uh won two all Irelands playing full forward is a fair a fair stat but Tip do have the potential to to push on like if Tip were to win the all Ireland again this year they'd probably win hurler the year and five or six of them would get all stars just even thinking about like you're looking at like we talked about Sean Og and the battle number seven before against 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 Dalo. Like Sean, o- as we'd say, Sean Og against Parik Matter, six time, six time All Star. We we're just chatting off air. I think it's twenty six minutes of Championship Hurling that he's missed. That's throughout his career. It'll be right in time. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's extraordinary. That is extraordinary. And twice as many All Stars as Sean Og ended up with too. Uh, unbelievably consistent throughout his career. Uh, like you can count on one hand the amount of poor performances he's had. One of them was last year in the Munster final against Limerick, but you could literally count on one hand the amount of bad performances he's had. Um, tip, till ha- tip, tip still have the scope, obviously, to push on past Cork with regards to the amount of all stars. Probably not earlier the years, realistically. I, I couldn't see. Eh, I couldn't see this team. May eh, they have to win three All Irelands at least? But uh, interesting. Could Tip still have the scope to win a bit more? But that Cork team. That car team is, um, yeah, it's, it's a really a star-studded outfit when you look at yeah. it. Yeah, thing, thing is now, people always talk about that car team and that half-back line of Sean Og, Gardner and Ronan Kern at six. Is Could you make a case that the Tipperary half-back line of Parik Maher, now Ronan played full-back in the, in the final, so I'm not going to include him in, in this, but Brendan Maher with three all-stars, young hurler of the year, Parik Maher with six all-stars, and Seamus Kendi, who was very, very important both in that All Ireland and the one in twenty sixteen, are actually a more impressive half back line. Ooh, uh, I wouldn't try. I wouldn't fancy trying to break down either of them. Now, to be honest, to be honest with you, um, yeah, like the like the only like how could Kenny beat beat Cork in 06 was to try and break down the half back line, and it's all these you got like teams are like people often ask like what's the most important line or who's the most important player. You go back through all these All Ireland winning teams, and you'll find that the half back line is just so hard to break down, and they're a launch pad, and they keep coming out with ball after ball after ball. Uh, due to Seamus Kennedy's inexperience, uh, in comparison to Ronan Curran, uh, Sean Og, and John Gardner, I would lean to the Cork side. To be honest with you, um, what about the? Th- there's a there's actually something that's um, that's something that they share. Both of them were. Wonder All Ireland's with new managers. So John Allen had just come in with Cork. Liam Sheedy just comes in with this Tipperary team. So that is something shared between them. Actually, do you know what I noticed towards the end of that Cork Galway final was how loose the marking was from the Cork team. There was a, a situation a couple of times where there were scrambles and there was guys standing on their own and the ball never got to them. And there was another one at towards the end. Galway were down by three points and I think this was the second last point they scored. Derek Hardiman took on a shot from 100 yards, went over the bar, great point. But he actually had a man in about 60 yards of space in front of the Cork goal and he didn't spot him and it could have levelled it. I just couldn't imagine that happening in a, in, a, in a modern sort of a team. So from that point of view, I know it's different generations and all that. Just that bit of sloppiness at the back and the feeling that Cork got away with it to some degree. They didn't beat the best team that year, which was Kilkenny, or, or the second best team, if you want to look at it that way. And as Diagnan said in the commentary at the time, they just did enough all year. They probably had more than more in the tank. But I don't know if that Cork team in 05 was at the same level that the Tip team ultimately, albeit got smashed in the Munster final by Limerick, was at the same level that Tip were in their final. Funny as you say about the marking. Uh, I think it was only... Uh, maybe maybe in the last five maybe five to six years when the matchups really started coming in. I think it was around the Kilkenny tip time probably actually that matchups started to come in and started putting Jackie on Lar and this kind of crack. Um so so Cork defence, any looseness there, you you just wouldn't get away with that now because like Shane, you're on him. He's your man, you're following him. You know, that that's the way it is now. It's not you can't sit back into a pocket or anything like that, or mark space or anything like that. It's all you're marking a man, or your he's your responsibility, or whatever. Or the man that comes into your area is your responsibility. You just wouldn't get that loose. It just wouldn't be that loose now. That's just the way it is. Because I suppose the stats is probably a lot to do with it as well. You're so accountable now, like you're so accountable. As in, 
you, you will get hammered a half time, your man got whatever, whatever, whatever. Whereas maybe back then, not so much. The argument you're making there, um, I understand where you're coming from, but Tip didn't win the league, they didn't win Munster, and to me, in 2019, and I'd just like to say as well, they beat a 14 man Kilkenny in that Ireland final. And I don't think Tip were the best team in Ireland in 2019. I think Limerick were the best team in Ireland. League champions, Munster champions. And I think they would have won the All Ireland if they got another semi final. They didn't. I know you're going to say, if me aunt had whatever. Uh, I understand that. Um, so for me, it's Cork 05 uh, all day long. Really? That yes. is. Yes. Yeah, I think it has to be t- Tip. The only thing I'd say about Tip is there's. There's probably a couple of those forwards that aren't lights out forwards in terms of like killing you with scores. But then you could say the same about Cork, like the McCarthy's aren't going to get lots of scores. Uh, Kieran Murphy isn't going to get lots of scores. So you could actually probably poke a couple of holes in both of these teams. You probably could, but as I kind of said to you, Cork are more to some of their parts. While there's legendary names out there, Cork won't, like it'll be death by a thousand cuts as opposed to Seamus Callan killing him with a goal. Or bubbles killing you with a piece of skill. I would worry for Tipperary in the sense that if who like if you have Joe Joe Dean as an unbelievable threat inside, and let's say you decide oh Cahal Barrett's the man for him, who goes on Ben O'Connor if he's gonna roam or play corner forward or roam a little bit? I'm not sure Tipperary have the players to keep into him. Now maybe Brendan Maher would do a job on him, you know, the way he has done it on Rory O'Connor last year, TJ Reid, Aaron Galan, so a man for any position really. So maybe that's what you'd be looking at for Tip. Sorry, now just when you mention him, like, wasn't it an absolute joy to watch Joe Dean going around spooning around balls the way he was going on? He was absolutely class. Even I remember mim- mimicking the free taking style. I think it was the left foot used to take a step back uh, before. Ah, like he was class. He, uh, I don't think he took a free, probably beyond fifty yards. He never took the 65s, to the best of my knowledge. Ben O'Connor used to take them, and even John Gardner take them at times as well. He kind of had a range, and they'd let him go within that range. And for a small man, he was actually deadly in the air. Remember he made that unbelievable catch? I think it was against Waterford, maybe, where he just kind of played someone's hand like that. But he was five foot nothing, and he was just... He kind of had it all. I remember giving Kevin Keane an awful scutcheon in the first half of the 2000 All Ireland semi final. He was just so graceful as well. I just he was definitely one of my favourite players growing up. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to lean with Tipperary here. Just Seamus Callan at full forward. Don't think there's any other player like him in the in the Cork lineup. John McGrath, I think he's always going to do damage. Might snap a ball in there. Noel McGrath will be loading up the bullets all day. Parik Maher, the six All Stars. Ronan Maher's play full back. I think I'm just about going to give it to Tipperary. You're you're holding firm with Cork, though, are you? Yeah, yeah. I go I, I go with Cork or five. Yeah. Um, Tip obviously the only thing I will say about Tip is Tip obviously played eight games to win the All Ireland in nineteen, whereas Cork played five. The, in fairness, the only game that Tipperary were beaten in was the Munster final against Limerick. Now they were they got fair shellac in the same day, but that was the only game they were beaten in. They won seven, uh, won seven, lost one, whereas Cork won five. Uh, played five, won five, won against the same opposition twice. Playing Waterford, um, maybe not their most impressive year, but I still think, um, I still think, I still, I still have them over that tip team, just about. So let us know what you think. Um, vote on Twitter. I'm going to put it out on Twitter at Shane Saint, and uh, also after the video, I'm going to type in 2019 Tipperary, and also on a separate comment 2005 Cork. So make sure to put your votes in there and let us know what you think. We'll count them up over the next 24 hours. The only problem is you're going to have a load of tip have a load of tip cronies um, voting, um, for, voting tips, for tips. So, so I'm going to have to get the Cork bandwagon in behind this one. <laughs> Work away. Best of luck with that one.